stoppage, but I can count on, I know I can count on you. Thank you so much for calling. And you are listening to 94.1 KPFA and 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online at kpfa.org. The time is 1 p.m. Stay tuned next for your own health and fitness. Welcome to your own health and fitness. I'm health integrationist Lena Berman with Dr. Jeffrey Fawcett, and we come to you weekly with a critical independent voice on the politics and practice of health and the environment. Since Botox was introduced 10 years ago or so, there's been a noticeable increase in the number of men and women actually getting cosmetic surgery. The key word here is surgery. Cosmetic procedures are invasive and very stressful, and stress accelerates aging. Botox may seem like a lesser intervention, but since its introduction, there is a new wave of interest in facial exercises. Botox is a poison that paralyzes the facial muscles. Since the muscles can no longer work, they become flaccid and the face sags over time. An area of our brain maps facial expressions, relaying emotional signals to the rest of the body. With Botox, the brain area doesn't light up or the connections weakened. Pretty serious downside. The good news is that facial exercises do a much better job of maintaining a youthful, healthy face. And as you will learn in this hour, combining a yogic approach to exercising your face increases muscle tone and consciousness. Join us today for the show I'm calling Better Than Botox. Our guest is Marie Veronique Nadeau. She is a skincare products formulator and writer. She's CEO and Head of Product Development for Marie Veronique Skin Therapy, an organic and therapeutic skin care line. Her book is Yoga Facelift. Marie Veronique has degrees in math and chemistry. Her daughter, Jay Nado, is a physicist and biomedical engineer. She combines laboratory, she contributes, forgive me, laboratory testing and protocol design of product ingredients. Marie Veronique's website is marieveronique.com, M-A-R-I-E-V-E-R-O-N-I-Q-U-E.com. And we're very happy to have you in studio with us to discuss um, an alternative to Botox and other sort of invasive procedures. So why don't we start there before we get into the very clever and wonderful exercises and, and, and different things that you have in the book for preserving the face and making it happy looking. Let's contrast supporting the skin and facial muscles versus what happens with popular cosmetic procedures, including one, that, one that's very astonishing, which you sent me a very good news report about uh, nanoparticles and anti-aging skin creams and sunscreens and also we'll do these one at a time microcurrent devices let's start, start there and go on from there so okay do you want me to start with nanoparticles whatever really okay. yeah uh, what, whatever really whatever, gets me going whatever as they used to say floats your boat <laughs> okay whatever frosts my cupcake <laughs> Whatever blows your dress up. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on and on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, my daughter is the nanotechnology expert, and uh, it was brought to our attention not too long ago uh, by somebody who'd seen an, a press release from Friends of the Earth, and they were talking about the use of nanoparticles in skin cream. And uh, they were asking for a moratorium on the use of nanoparticles until we find out a little, a little bit more about them. Uh, work to uh, assess the risks, evaluate them, quantify them, and proceed from there. Which is never what we do with new technologies. Um, you know, it's, it's always the case of we learn as we go along. We launch the technology, like for instance, X-rays. And oh, thank you for that as an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because X-rays first came out and everybody went, "Whoa, isn't this cool?" Fluoroscopes were on sale. Remember, mm -hmm. I remember the the when you went into 
a shoe store. This is, you know, this this lets you know how far Dancing. back I go. This Dancing. is in the fifties, yeah. And and you'd stick your foot in there, and and you'd see your bones through this greenish hue. And, you know, they were pulled when they discovered uh, how dangerous these were, and how dangerous X-rays are. No but, safe dose. Right, right. Uh, you know, they do have their use in medical diagnostics now. But, you know, this was something that gradually came out over time. Nanotechnology is very new technology. It, it embraces a completely different physics. We know nothing about it. And as I say, I get from the horse's mouth, which is a nanotechnology expert. And they, they really don't know at this point whether it's safe to use or whether it's it isn't, and this is where why the Royal Society uh, in the United Kingdom and why Friends of the Earth are asking, just why don't we use the precautionary principle here, guys, and just until we know more about potential risks, why use them? And there really isn't much advantage to using them. Uh, so anyway, the skincare companies are really sitting on the fence. A lot of a lot of them have invested a good deal of research into developing nanotechnology or nanoparticles and creams. They have fullerenes. They have uh, all kinds of fancy delivery devices. Uh, and then at the same time, they'll say. Um, well, gee, you know, nanoparticles don't really penetrate to the skin. Well, they're actually, they want to develop them to penetrate the skin. And we do know that, that substances put on the skin are absorbed, you know, sometimes as much as yes. 60% at of least. what we put on our skin is absorbed, at least. Into yeah. the blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you said it had, did you say fullerenes? Fullerenes. Fullerenes. It's, it's, it's just a, 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 it's a nanocapsule is what it is. And so this nanocapsule contains antioxidants, other uh, anti-aging elements that supposedly, in, at least in theory, are going to be delivered into the skin where they will improve the condition of the skin. But it's all, it's complete speculation. In fact, we don't know how nanoparticles behave. We, we just don't know how they behave. So, Jeff, did you have something you wanted to say about the possible downsides there? Oh, oh no, I was just going to comment on what Fred, fullerenes are. Yeah. Uh, there, as as uh, Marie said, that they're they're a container. They're a particular form. They're named after Buckminster mm -hmm. Fuller, yeah. uh -huh. um, who is also the, the the person of the geodesic domes. Yeah. But it's a, a way. That's that's kind of. It is a delivery system for uh, other stuff, and it is and it is uh, it is active. It is geologically active. It's chemically active, and so it's going to be biologically active. Mm -hmm. well, we just yeah. don't know How? in what way. Mm -hmm. Right. And, exactly. And, and you know what really. Uh, strikes me, and maybe this is just on the surface, is that if you're improving the delivery system, um, might you be driving other substances into the skin that are in uh -huh. these creams that you do not want, and particularly maybe do not want to go past the blood-brain barrier, which maybe this will increase the possibility of doing. Anyway, it's already, there already are, if people go to a fancy department store and buy a very expensive uh, anti-aging cream of some sort or another, and you look at the list of ingredients, you will uh -huh. notice that they are not substances found in nature. And um, right. You do need to stop and ask yourself whether you want those in your bloodstream. Yeah, that's right. That is a point that the Friends of the Earth makes, too, no. is that what else is going to be delivered? Oh, and, yeah. and cosmetics and everything these uh -huh, days are uh -huh. just full of, of oh, heavy, yeah. heavy metals and all sorts mm -hmm. of terrible yeah. things. So let's move on to this thing where, you know, they've recognized that, that there are muscles in the face uh -huh. and that maybe they should be worked. So now what we do is we hook them up to micro current devices that uh -huh. contract the muscles for you. <laughs> Here's a thought. You don't have to do anything. Uh, How nice. Well, yeah, that probably works about as well as applying the same things to your body. Your body. Yeah. And I remember talking to a friend of mine who was very bookish, and she said, yeah, it sounds great to me. Just hook me up, and I'll just read a book 
<laughs> but, you know, it's it just on the surface of the thing, you think, well, and there's got to be something wrong with this. Well, can this. we say electromagnetic fields, mm, boys and girls? Yes, indeed, we can. Yes. If nothing mm. else. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there's another technology that's been around for a while. And as um, problems start to emerge, it's always hard to develop, though, this causal relationship, this one to one, you know, and this is where you get the arguments and the, the contravening studies. So. It's a problem, but again, it's it's not volitional. It's, it's not coming from yourself. You know, why not take some responsibility for what you do and how you look and and how you feel? Well, it's also well, likely to work better, actually. Mm-hmm. And as I said, if you are if you have a sort of balance beam, and on one side is the uh, effects of one of these things, like like um, having um, waves of electricity pulse through your skin <laughs> yeah. uh, to work your muscles and then you have the downsides to that which are uh-huh, electromagnetic fields uh-huh, were increasingly uh-huh. fine to increase your chances of broken DNA and cancer and all kinds of other nasty things right. then if you exercise your face muscles by yourself which might take uh, a maintenance time 15 minutes a day once you get used to doing it uh, and you can also do it to freak out drivers next to you in the next <laughs> lane then why not do it yourself um, so it's the it's the risk benefit um, I want to move on to Botox because you make uh-huh. you make the point that I made in the frame about Botox and I want you to talk more about it but I also want to say that one of the things that really excited me about your book because I've been sort of looking for a book like this for a while because as I said I've been doing Jack LaLanne's funny uh-huh. exercises for a long time because intuitively as someone who works my uh, physical body uh, lower than my face that I figured that your face has muscles uh-huh. too um is that, you know, the other thing that comes through women's minds when they start to see their faces changing, you know, is the collagen changes, there's uh-huh. issues with your health, there's all kinds of other things we'll talk about in terms of what the skin is showing you about your general health, but there's this sense of why is it not okay for us to age? I mean, why can't we uh-huh. have a little, what's the knee, you know? And then, uh-huh. then the other side to it is that reading your book, what you realize is that it doesn't have, just in the same way that you can slow aging and maintain a vitality to your to the rest of your body by exercising you can do this with the face and then here comes botox which uh-huh. is completely the opposite so explain why okay the way botox works is it paralyzes the muscle and so the the classic example is okay we've got two muscles uh over our eyebrows uh horizontally are called the, the corrugators these are the muscles that draw your eyebrows together in the classic mine. scowl <laughs> some people more than others and we can even talk about why that's so mm-hmm. um but okay you know so these really powerful powerful muscles we realize how powerful they are when they inject a neurotoxin, which is Botox, which comes from botulinum. So it's it's powerful neurotoxin. Um, can kill you. Um, Oops. So, yeah. I hate uh, when that happens. Uh, yeah, it ruins your day. It's just anyway. So okay, so paralyzes the muscle. You cannot move those corrugators. You cannot make that scowl, and you understand immediately when this happens how much it is that your muscles are actually making the face that you're walking around with. So uh, there are alternatives to using Botox to paralyze the muscle better really to engage the muscle and learn how to use it so that you can avoid making the scowl so that you're aware first of all that you're scowling and I think that's where the yoga comes in it's just, it's, it's about you know becoming aware and and when you do these exercises you can actually feel your face in a way um you didn't before just as when you exercise your body you feel your body in a new way so i think that's 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 really what makes it so valuable over and above you know you're you're not just somebody else doing some mechanical mechanical thing to you well but also if you do that mechanical thing and you paralyze your muscles they're more likely to become weak and start to sag well that's it atrophy is a big part of it and in fact i had a student tell me about a woman in her 30s you know the classic horror story she she was a 
Botox fanatic and uh, now her everything collapses. You don't use a muscle. You 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 put your you break your leg. You put it in a cast after six months. You, you what do your muscles look like? They're completely flaccid. Well, it's the same way with Botox. Too much Botox and you're going to need serious rehab. And what if what if um, I mean I, I've had women also tell me that they had their first facelift at 38 because. <sighs> No, they yeah. said because it turns out, if you look at the research, that the younger you do it, uh -huh. the better it works. Uh -huh. But I think we all know that facelifts, because they're stretching the skin, uh -huh. uh, have to be repeated. They, exactly. And it, just so people understand, it is sort of major surgery. You are going under anesthesia to do this. Uh -huh. um, but once again, we're not at all addressing the underlying muscles. And in fact... I think it gets harder and harder to move your muscles underneath, judging from the way that several celebrities look. I mean, it's uh -huh, that, you know, they, uh -huh. they can't actually move their face very well right. once it's stretched like right, that. Right, Plus, they also right. begin to look like burn victims, but that's another yeah. story. Yeah, but yeah. Um, for those of you just uh, tuned in, this is Your Own Health and Fitness. Uh, I'm Lena Berman, and I've got Jeff Fawcett with me, Ph.D., and we are on the phone. Well, actually, we are not on the phone. We're in studio with Marie Verona Veronique Nadeau. N-A-D-E-A-U, and we're talking about uh, the yoga facelift, <laughs> among other things, uh, and skin care in general. So, so, um, but it is major surgery, and, and when women say, <laughs> I had a friend say, I said something about, you know, just facing the aging process and all that, and the face, and this, and she said, oh, you can have it fixed, and I thought, <laughs> over and over and over and over again. It reminds me of the movie Death Becomes Her, where they, oh, end, up, yes. they end up using Bondo. <laughs> fix themselves you know it's just how long can you keep doing that you know it really is amazing and it does get back to this whole fear that we have of, of aging that comes really from the cultural messages we're getting and they're they're we depends on the culture you know in, in this culture we're getting more i think of the messages that you're you're just has been it's just you're a throwaway person after a certain age you know that, but but the takeaway message of your book and from my own experience like i said even doing jack lalane's funny little exercises uh which also work um my <laughs> observation is that your chin does not have to hit your chest i mean you can <laughs> You can, you can actually, because I've, I've seen where if I forget for a few days and I don't do them, mm -hmm, then I start mm -hmm. having more looseness under there, and then I do mm -hmm, the exercises in mm -hmm. a tight. So, if people always say I, I don't, I, you know, I, I I want to age well, or I, you know, they all yeah, have this. Yeah. And part of what we're talking about is maintaining vitality. If if, mm -hmm. the, if people look embodied. If they look like yes. they're present and they have a sort of spirit in their bodies and in their faces, uh -huh. then not only are the not only is the skin tighter because the muscles are working better, but you also have it's your best shot. You know, you really do look better. I mean, it really does work. You really do change some of the sagging. You really do, and it's deeper than that because you know, I and if we can get back to the whole thing about Botox, it's kind of like. A, a reinforcement of what happens to us from the kind of culture we're brought up in. So we yeah. develop a facial armor just as we develop body armor. You know, it's, it's like binding women's feet. It really is. And so, yeah, and, and you take away the identity and you say, okay, this, this mask, this is acceptable. So we develop certain facial expressions, certain facial habits, and after a time, we're not even aware of what kinds of messages we're con communicating to the outside world. And our face is our interface. It's our identity it's how we communicate and what we put out there is what we get back well but the other thing is that i don't think that everybody necessarily has to look the same i think oh, it's no. possible for women to look fierce I mean, if oh, as you yeah, age, yeah, yeah. as you age, you might look a little bit fierce. And oh. if you look fierce, I don't think that's a terrible thing. You may yeah. have earned that over absolutely, the years. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But I do think it's important that if you look fierce, you're aware of it. Yes. Uh, you know, if, yes. if you're going around being ferocious, know it. There's yes. a lot of people who who just adopt these these right. expressions and especially you know the botox lines it, it communicates mm -hmm. it can be anxiety or, mm -hmm. or shutting down all those things that we don't 
really necessarily want. What we do want is an aliveness to our face, mm-hmm. for sure. And and fierce is good. Fierce, ferocious. Uh, no, we we don't want something bland necessarily. No, I don't. I mean, yeah. some people. Are. <laughs> um, I don't want to wait too long to get into the actual sort of programs that you have. I want mm-hmm. to say that we're going to also talk about what exactly ages the skin, what sorts of things happen. But for for a moment, let's move to the exercises. Okay. Uh, there, uh, I. I am used to exercising. If somebody puts their hands uh, underneath my arms in my back and says, tighten down your latissimus, it's, I'm right there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But one of the things that was extraordinary about your exercises is that I had to really concentrate to uh-huh. find yeah. those muscles. Some of them were already being used, but others, like around my uh, upper lids, uh-huh. tightening down uh-huh. those orbital uh-huh. muscles uh-huh. and stuff was really required incredible concentration and but then when i found them i had this incredible sense of pleasure Uh, see that's the payoff and it really is worth it because it does take some time these are muscles we haven't used in in years and years and you know the platysmus right under your chin we never use it so but the payoff is exactly what you say and when you can feel those muscles and and you feel like you well you can actually feel them when you're just walking around it's 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 a very powerful feeling it's lovely you know you can describe i think on the air because this is a pretty simple exercise to do how to work that one underneath the chin which is the one that yeah yeah because that's really just uh, your tongue position and your mm-hmm. head position. So why don't you describe, this is for the turkey waddle. Yes, exactly. Okay, so you just lift your, your chin until, until your neck is nice and taut. And then now you're going to take the top of your tongue and push it against the roof of your mouth. And when you do that, you push pretty hard, hard as you can. Against your upper teeth. Against, uh-huh, against your upper teeth and that whole roof of your mouth there. And when you do that. You can feel that tightening. There's a kind of little triangular soft spot right in back of your chin and your neck, top part of your neck there, and that's your platysmus. So when you press with your tongue against your teeth and the top of, and the roof of your mouth, you feel that tighten. Now, if you take your thumb and you push against it, you can make... You can push against your thumb. You can push against your thumb. This is under your chin, right under Under the point of your chin, the bottom part. Yeah, it's that little soft little space, and everybody knows where that is. It's it's the Mm -hmm. impending turkey waddle for those of us Mm -hmm. who don't actually have one yet. Um, Or we'll never have one because we exercise. Mm -hmm. So you just push against that. Mm -hmm. Just with a pulsing. Push hard. Push as hard as you can. You're not going to hurt yourself. And then resist it with the muscle. Uh-huh. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that's really, again, just to be clear, wh- whenever you do these sorts of exercises, it's very important to maintain a kind of neutral spine if you're sitting to sit in the middle of your pelvis and to let your shoulders stay relaxed in other words do do these exercises with the muscle that she's having you touch that marie is having you touch and feel don't use your uh don't scowl while you're doing it you know don't hold your breath while you're doing it don't do it with your shoulders the universal (laughs) muscle group is the shoulders um and when you bring your neck back don't force it back further than it can go bring it Mm -hmm. back so that you feel the stretch and then press the tongue against there and let your mouth sort of open a little if it has to this is really really a good exercise for this the one that jack lane taught was where you sit just sit with your head straight and Mm -hmm. take your tongue and try to touch your chin with Mm -hmm. it which is another Mm -hmm. good one oh yeah that's a good one too but that one is very shocking for passerbys (laughs) it's a very frightening (laughs) sort of exercise to do in public although this one this one and I think you just look sort of dreamy, <laughs> um, which is okay. That's good. And, and yeah. then, and then the other one is you do the same thing and you press your tongue against your, your lower palate against your lower mm-hmm. teeth, same thing, mm-hmm. and press against that. So that's an example of what these exercises are like. And one of the things I like about them is that you're you have people putting their hands on their face uh-huh. so that they can find the muscle uh-huh. and push against it. And it is this kind of I, I mean, I hate to say this, but I, I'm, you know, relatively compulsive person. I had to try them all, I, most of them. I think I left out a few because it just got to be silly time-wise. But, um, you know, I was on my hands and knees doing the lion thing and mm-hmm, trying great. to. That's that one was the hardest one though, is to bring your head back and uh-huh. create this uh-huh. O with your mouth, yep. and then without smiling, smile. So uh-huh. you're pulling back on your cheek muscles. Uh-huh. Uh, was a, a very interesting experience. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's one of my that's, favorites. That's, Any a, of the cheek- that's going to take some yeah. practice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, the cheek muscles, and those are those are really subtle, but again, big payoff once you get it. Oh, I think so. And then some people will probably find, as I did, that some of the muscles are being used, like the ones that clench your teeth. I uh, mm-hmm. found those are quite strong. Mm-hmm. I could actually, oh, huge. I could yeah. probably pull a boat with those muscles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like Jack. <laughs> yes, Jack used to do that. Hope he's yeah. listening. <laughs> Um, so let's talk for a moment about what ages the skin, what sorts of things, um, among other things, you, you know, with the usual oxidation, uh, loss of hydration and, and fluid in the skin, mm-hmm. um, habits, gravity. You also talk about something which is very close to my house, uh, heart, uh, which is the accelerated aging uh, glycation end products, which occurs when people yeah. have uh, abnormal blood sugars, among other things, right. and high stress. Right. So you want to talk for a moment about that? Yeah. Well, that's, again, that's that's an internal process. So, you know, there are basically two kinds of aging. There's the aging that comes from the outside, like the UVA, UVB exposure is a huge source of aging um and then there are the internal processes so this so this is the real aging of the skin so um yeah advanced glycation end products happen as a result of not processing um proteins correctly and so you end up with these sticky little deposits and you can have these in your skin as well as in other parts of your body uh when um, they end up in your skin, though. You, the, the collagen, the elastin be, can become brittle. Uh, it can break down. It can collapse. And where it collapses, since, since that is the, the collagen and elastin fibers actually form like a, a, a weave, like a mattress that holds up your epidermis. And so where you have collapses in the mattress, just imagine, you know, you, you, like you're somebody sleeping in the same spot on the mattress night after night after night and so you get a sag in it well that sag can create a depression and the epidermis follows in and just falls into that depression and voila you have a wrinkle yeah i actually have a slightly different understanding of glycation end products um i don't think of them as a faulty protein metabolism what it Uh is uh, primarily in my experience is um what happens is that when people's blood sugars are not under control because they're eating for their system too much starch and too many sugars and too Uh many Uh carbohydrates of various sorts not just not just the refined Uh uh if the blood sugars don't maintain a good balance they get high the insulin level gets high and there's uh, this, eventually the insulin message, does, message doesn't work to move the sugars around and lower them. So you uh-huh, get these uh-huh. high, persistent high blood sugars and too much insulin. And the sugars themselves cause a caramelization uh-huh, of, the, uh-huh. of the proteins and causes a sticky substance. Like when you cook meat for a long time, you get this sticky stuff. And it causes a tremendous amount of accelerated aging. Uh-huh. Um, so keeping the blood sugars normal and easy even and eating enough of the good fats, undamaged, unprocessed fats in, in good balance and not eschewing uh, proteins, but eating a good balanced amount and keeping your blood sugars at a nice even level and getting all those good carotenoids and things that are in vegetables are going to help with the skin from the inside out. Um, so, so good health and good fitness is reflected in the skin of the face. Well, there's, there's also something else happening at the dermal level, and that is you have these proteoglycans or the glycosaminoglycans, and the one everybody knows about is hyaluronic acid. Mm-hmm. And so this is, a, it is a protein compound, and at the end of it, you have the sugars, and the sugars are very hydrophilic, so they attract moisture into the skin, and so this is what gives you that nice, plump skin. As we get older, we start to uh, uh, lose the amount of hyaluronic acid and the other glycosaminoglycans in the skin. The rate of about 1% after the age of 30, we start producing about 1% less per year so it's kind of a downhill slope uh, but there again this is where diet is so important because if we do eat uh, have a diet that provides what the skin needs to keep on biosynthesizing those uh, glycosaminoglycans we're in good shape 
Do you want to give us some examples of what helps with that? Uh, okay. There, uh, okay, so we're talking about there, there is a Japanese yam that, that is very high in hyaluronic acid. Um, but they're hard to get. What, what are the easy things? Isn't it isn't uh, um, aloe vera? Aloe vera, aloe vera juice is very yeah. The anything with the mucopolysaccharides in it. Mm-hmm. So these are the sugar complexes. Um, but not no, we're not talking about eating sugar. We're talking no, about no. okay because that, <laughs> no. that's confusing to people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There. There. It. The. There are a couple of easier things to get. I, I'm not remembering them right now that were in your book. Some other easier well, examples, well, but easy, anyway. Yeah, I'm not remembering either. There's mm. some mushrooms. There's mm. there's some other sources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in general, yeah. you know, vegetables have those. Mm-hmm. Fruits and vegetables have. Oh, when, you, when you eat the fiber, when you eat the full thing, the berries and all those things. Oh, the other thing, too, is freshness really matters, mm-hmm. too. So, uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're, for instance, uh, eating... Uh, tomatoes, even if they're not organic, it turns out that um, that uh, some of these sugars that we need in our diet start to degrade after about half an hour after they've been picked. If you eat a tomato that's on the vine or even the vine ripened tomatoes that you can find in the grocery store, they're better than the organic tomatoes. You're actually getting more benefit from them. Um. We're going to need to take a, a, a very brief uh, musical break. Uh, we are again talking with Marie Ver- Veronique uh, Nadeau, and uh, we're talking about the yoga facelift. We're also going to go on and talk about um, how your general health is expressed in your face and how you care for your skin and your muscles and how you retard aging uh, using natural and nutritional uh, supports, but right now we're talking literally about the facial exercises and the yoga facelift. Uh, this is your own health and fitness. I'm Lena Berman with Jeff Fawcett, again with uh, Marie Verona- Ver- Veronique Nadeau, author of the yoga facelift, and we're going to break for a moment. Please stay with us. We will be right back. <laughs> to an interview with skin care specialist Marie Veronique Nadeau, author of Yoga Facelift. Visit our website, yourownhealthandfitness.org, all spelled out, for easier extended access to our over 600 archive shows with our library card feature. Get a free stream of this week's show, and there's lots more. Um, you can find links for our guests, etc. It's all at yourownhealthandfitness.org. If you want to reach us, please use email. It's admin, A-D-M-I-N, at yourownhealthandfitness.org. There are uh, a number of things related to hormone balance and the skin. Huh? So so when the hormones start to fluctuate and get uh, problematic, then that, that can be restored. And that's very much uh, caused by um, stress. Mm. Oh, yeah. Stress is huge and and the uh, impact it has on the skin. Yeah. I, I find that, um, I know, simple simple little things like taking cod liver oil are yes. really helpful. The essential yeah. fatty acids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the other things that are important to think about is um, when you start out doing a bunch of facial exercises, I'm thinking that... Um, 
it's probably possible for people to get a little overwhelmed and maybe try to do too many of them. Mm -hmm. and stuff. So why don't you talk about how to assess your face, how to find the, where you want to work and how and how much of a time commitment to make? Okay. I think that, first of all, uh, it, everybody has different issues. And it's it, everybody knows their own face, hopefully. And they know what it is they'd like to change about their face. And so what I tell people that a, a good way to start is, is just to kind of assess what it is that you'd like to see a little bit different. And usually people are pretty good about that. They'll say, oh, I don't like the line between my eyebrows. Or, oh, I don't like um, the so-called marionette lines that, that come from the nose down to the mouth and then down to the chin. Um, so they have, or, or, you know, I don't like the sagging in my neck. The neck is a big one. Um, lots of people have issues with your neck and actually your neck starts to show aging before the rest of your, your face. So um, I just say do you have a run through of the exercises that you see. Pick out the ones that appeal to you. Don't ever do more than five minutes a day because you can wear yourself out. You can do too much. So you just set up a routine for yourself and you can do it anytime as you say when you're in traffic. You know, I did some on, on my bicycle on the way to here to the studio. Um, just you, at first you might want to look in, in the mirror to make sure that you're isolating the muscles properly so that you're not creating dynamic wrinkling. There are good exercises and there are not so good exercises. Any exercise that you do for your face, it's it's important to, you know, make sure that you're 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 not scowling or, or making wrinkles mm -hmm. elsewhere because uh, when you fall into facial habits where you're making the same face over and over and over again, the same expression, you can create a groove in the surface of your skin that, that ends up as a wrinkle. Well, and in fact, I don't think you just have to tighten your buttocks and force yourself not to make those expressions. I think what happens naturally is that when you start to identify these different facial muscle groups, uh -huh. you have a different sensation of your expressions in your face. Like just now, of course, I overdid it yesterday, so I just smiled broadly and my uh -huh. cheeks hurt a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so just, but it actually feels kind of it, good. It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit like having taken a long walk and feeling your legs the next day. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yes. But it also makes you more conscious of how you're actually using your face. Yes. Yes. So that that sort of handles itself. I'm I'm sort of uh, weaving back and forth between the exercises and uh, sort of conventional versus this more natural way of dealing with your skin. You warn against over exfoliation, and if, yep. if there are men listening to the show, incidentally, I hope men are listening to the show because this applies to you too. Um, exfoliation means that you're using a product that speeds up the skin skin sloughing so that you have new skin underneath and the favorite product for using it and they use it with young women with acne too uh -huh. is retin a which is a synthetic form of vitamin a which i personally have read bad things about you said it's may not be the problem but the problem is the over exfoliation so please explain oh okay well retin a is actually uh the retinoic acid which is what your skin utilizes when you, when you take in uh vitamin a say through beta carotene you've eaten a carrot or something like that it converts to retinoic acid and so the conversion rate means that you're not able to utilize this as much vitamin A. So that's the idea behind Retin-A is that, oh, we'll just use the retinoic acid, which is the end product that we want anyway. Um, I just want to briefly uh, remind people that this is your own health and fitness. Uh, I'm Lena Berman, and I'm on the phone with Marie Ver Veronique Nadeau, N-A-D-E-A-U. We're talking about the yoga facelift and about the health of the skin in general. And here we are in... Uh, here we are in person, as always, uh, coming to you to encourage you to join the station, become part of the KPFA community, uh, and in in and in with all of that, in with getting KPFA 24/7 free, unless you can help us now, which will help people who can't afford to help us now. Um, we're there. We're always there. We need you to show up now. And today, what we have for you is a thank you gift for joining the station at a $75 
uh, premium, I should say, this is Lena Berman, Jeff Fawcett sitting here, is a copy of this very beautiful book, The Yoga Facelift. It's one of these, um, it's a square shaped book, it's, it's fairly large format, and it has a beautiful cover, and the, it has absolutely gorgeous photographs of uh, how to do these exercises. It also has a lot of information in the back about um, what causes problems with the skin and how to treat them naturally uh, and she gives an antioxidant program she talks about what to put on your face and what not to put on your face she talks about acne and rosacea which have become big issues now and how to avoid really invasive and nasty products and she does give you information on topical treatments and she describes uh, things about the uh, skin controversy about sunscreens and whatnot and what things are safe to use and what things are not it's uh it's a very it's packed with information it's a really beautiful book i i first encountered her some years ago and started doing these exercises and by golly they work so it's your turn uh we need you to step up give us a call as always at 510 848 Five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two or online at kpfa dot org all the time. The pledge premium, the thank you gift is if you pledge seventy five dollars, we thank you with a, a copy of the Yoga Facelift by Marie Veronique Nado. Uh, this book will carry you forward for quite a long time. But we need you to call now, and of course, uh, winter fun drive is always a challenge, especially now that we're having an early spring and people want to be outside, but it's even more of a time to want to put your best face forward. So I do urge you to get a copy of this book. I think that you will not be disappointed. Um, Jeffrey, you've been doing some of the exercises in the book. This is not just for women, and you've had some remarkable effects. Again, the number is 510 one Three, two. What have you found most helpful in the book? One of the interesting things about this is that um, for no, well, um, I, I am dealing with the aftermath of Lyme disease, which has affected um, a lot of my, it, it lands in my shoulders and neck. And I'm still trying to recover from that. And doing these exercises has been really wonderful for loosening up uh, my neck, my shoulders. Um, there's a series of exercises in here which are specifically for the neck. Um, uh, and and uh, it, it has been extremely helpful when I uh, move my neck. It doesn't crack and creak any longer well your postures change it's quite remarkable um it's also i do these exercises uh, typically first thing in the morning which oftentimes is when i'm quite stiff and so that starts the day off well uh, in addition to which just traditionally my uh, my attention my stress stress lands in my neck as it does i think with a lot of people and again these exercises help with that but in addition to that i look at old pictures of i look pictures of my mother before she oh. <laughs> passed away and um Gravity was taking hold, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and um, I kind of decided I'd prefer not to go there. Well, it it, it works. Five ten eight four eight five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. Um, it, I think all families, you know, you you if you look back at your parents, unless you are young enough to have parents who've already started doing. Uh, cosmetic procedures, but even then it doesn't make you, the problem is the cosmetic procedures where in most cases you're undergoing general anesthetic, seizure that with a, a facelift, which seems if you have the money, why not? Uh, actually, they destroy your face. They take it apart. They do major surgery. They actually cut into the muscles. They do all this stuff and then they pull it very tight and 
if you gain any weight after that procedure, it louses it up. If you, uh, it doesn't last, it begins to sag again because you can't, the muscles aren't strong. So it needs to be redone. And it's, and it's, as I said, the, the, the cosmetic surgery is major surgery and requires a long recovery time. A lot of, of nasty drugs, including general anesthesia, which uh, is dangerous. And then it needs to be redone. It's not necessary because in fact, these people don't look younger. They just look like they've had cosmetic surgery. 510-848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732. Pick up a, a, a thank you gift of the yoga facelift. And to reassure you, this is not an arduous, unpleasant uh, group of exercises. What Marie suggests is that there's a lot of exercises and you go through them and you look at them and then you you choose you know your areas. Now, most of us have have things to do with the neck. And I was absolutely not going to have a turkey waddle, which um, all the people on my father's side of the family, who I most resemble, their chin ended up hitting their chest as they got older. And I wasn't going there. And I was I could see something starting and I'm not going to do surgery. So I started doing these exercises. I've always been interested in facial exercises. And. I've noticed that when I've gone back to this book and really did a refresher to remember how to do things properly, that I saw immediate results, that, that the little bit that was left is disappearing. So this is remarkable. So I have a very young-looking neck, and I'm on the wrong side of 65. So, um, Oh, I don't know that you're on the wrong side of oh. 65. <laughs> you're all on the same stage, the same age as the station. I guess you're on the better side. The better side. Well, I was born 65. the same year as the station. Anyway, 510-848-5732-1800-439. Joke though we do during these little pledge breaks, uh, the urgency is to get the station funded. And for you, like I said, to put your best face forward by getting a copy of the Yoga Facelift and starting these exercises. 510-848. Four eight five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two and kpfa dot org and hey you people who listen online and who listen in uh, the kpfa archive as well. Um, please don't feel that you should be exempt. Uh, the main maintenance of these archives are not free. Nothing is free. Please help us so that we can keep doing this work. We need your help. It, it's a, it's not, it, nothing in the world is free, including, uh, cosmetic surgery. <laughs> it's aside from what it costs, what it does to your face afterwards. 510-848-5732-1800-439. 5732. Marie uh, Veronique suggests that you find the area in, you know, the areas of concern on your face and you, and, you, and at first, for about one to two months, you combine all the separate areas of the exercise and, you know, you do these, these different exercises and you do them, um, every other day or every two or three days, uh, for five to ten minutes. Um, you can combine the exercises differently if you want, but that you not wipe yourself out doing these. I did that, of course. I really throw myself at exercise. Um, so you, if you do too much, that's kind of hard too. And you have to, it's very important to have the book because it shows you how to prevent making new muscles, uh, making, sorry, making new creases. Uh, I think maybe it, I just flubbed also because of course you don't end up with a bulbous face because you're doing this. <laughs> These are isometrics. You don't make big muscles. You just smooth out and get rid of some of the folds. And even if you have lived long enough to have the little mar- Marionette lines around your mouth and the stuff on the sides of your nose or or the little smile above your uh, upper lip and, and of course the the um, I have like the Grand Canyon between my eyebrows but these things can be worked through and as you work the face uh, doing this you do this for a month or two and then you can maintain doing something called the quick lift which may take you um, two minutes three you know five minutes a day and not even every day uh, the important thing to remember is that the exercises work and the cosmetic procedures do not work and that Marie Veronique has given you a yogic 
approach to this so it includes various postures for relaxation the whole the book has a whole section on relaxation and breathing and stuff like that but the exercises themselves are also somewhat yogic and it is refreshing if you had a terrible day and you do your exercises you do feel refreshed afterwards 510-848-5732-1800-439-5732 kpfa.org get on the phone tell the phone volunteers that you want to put your best face forward and you want the yoga facelift and you want to donate now god forbid you have extra money and you want to give it to the station that would really be helpful because there are so many people who can't afford to pay kpfa but listen religiously and tell me that it's their education it's the most important part of their day is listening to various programs that they care about and that they learn enormous amounts and um they just don't have the money they're they're the people they're they're the you know 99 percenters who are on the bottom end and so if you have a little extra money and you want to be philanthropic you can give it to kpfa and we'll continue programming to everybody because it doesn't we don't have a, t- a toll booth at the entrance to the radio or or the internet 510-848-5732 Three, two. Uh, so the, the Botox thing is very interesting because, as I said in the, the beginning of the show, the frame, that you not only destroy the ability to make facial expressions, which, which affects your brain's ability to not only express but to understand facial expressions, but... You're, even though you don't have lines, what happens is the entire face begins to collapse and sag. So you don't realize, you, you know, we, we make sort of painful expressions. We grimace during the day. We frown. We do various things. The yoga facelift helps you to be more conscious of what you're doing so that you don't do that. But erasing the wrinkles is not the way to look youthful and healthy. It's softening the wrinkles and strengthening the muscles so that you get the right kind of not only malleability and mutability, but uh, expressiveness and capacity. And I, I can tell you that people who age well, who exercise their bodies and their faces and they eat well and they reduce their amount of exposure to it's not just the sun the the computer screen is radiation and that damages the skin uh, rather profoundly as Ole Johansson found out with all that research that he did even if you're not sick from it it it, it ages your skin so taking breaks doing a yoga facelift it makes you can see the difference in people who are aging well they it's not that they look 20 it's that they look really good i had jeffrey's granddaughter was here um, her i guess step grandma and we were talking she and her girlfriend they're 15 they were telling me this and that and i was saying well you know for women it's a, you know you get older and then you're not hot anymore you know and that's kind of sad and they went oh my god you are hot you are so hot you are really hot and i'm like okay that's like the best endorsement of how you're doing is a 15 year old thinks you're hot <laughs> honest to god so 510-848-5732 1-800-439-5732 jump on the wagon get the yoga facelift for a 75 75 dollar premium or better yet get a couple copies give one to your library give one to a man or a woman um, this is not just a book for for women although women will be more gravitating toward it because they think about their skin more and remember that the back of the book is full of other pieces of information about maintaining skin health, which Marie is, is an absolute brilliant ad, including the use of oils on the skin, not not these sort of drying or exfoli- exfoliating things, but the oil actually. And um, just don't don't get don't take don't take this for granted. It really works. I'm, I I wouldn't have put it, I wouldn't be putting it on the air and trying to offer it to you if it didn't. And like I said, the two of us know this from experience. Don't you find the exercises refreshing? Yeah, wakes me up. Makes uh, makes me sit up straight, makes me stand up straight. I feel powerful uh, when I'm out walking. Um, I wanted to say something about the politics of all this. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, there's there's kind of some obvious politics that whether or not you are interested in um, uh, the, the specific issue of the yoga facelift and 
what is happening to your face. You should be interested in what the medical establishment does to you and does to those who are concerned with those issues and why you should support KPFA at 510-848-5732, 800-439-5732, and online all the time at kpfa.org. Uh, we've already certainly touched on that this is exemplary of how conventional medicine deals with health issues, and this is a health issue. If you don't think your looks are a health issue, um, there's folks who are making a lot of money selling stuff to people uh, and people who are creating alternatives about health and how you look and how you feel. Because as, as Lena mentioned and as uh, Marie discusses, how you look, how your face works does in fact literally affect how you feel. And how people respond to you, which makes a big difference. Women complain all the time about becoming invisible. Uh, as you age, and I just found out I'm still hot, so I'm very <laughs> pleased about that. I don't want to be invisible. Um, yeah, it is it is remarkable that uh, since heroic medicine became popular, everything is heroic. So it's cut and burn and scrape and, you know. Add a drug. Yeah, add, poison take, it. take some more drugs. Yeah, inject drugs. 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732. And as I also mentioned during the frame, Marie is no noted, she emailed me and said that uh, facial exercises are totally coming back. In fact, even places, e salons and places that were doing Botox now are opening uh, classes in face gyms where people can go get their faces in, in shape. So it's, it's kind of ironic that Botox is driving the return of facial exercise trend that we're starting to see. I remember Jack LaLanne used to teach people facial exercises, but Marie's exercises don't make you make wrinkles while you're doing them. That's the difference. And honest to God, I mean, I really... I'm really shocked by, I just started using the book again. I was still doing exercise, but I started really looking at the book and doing it carefully. And I started doing her quick lift. And it, it does does something. I mean, it's quite remarkable. And, and you see results pretty quickly in my experience. I, I mean, I, especially with you, with your neck, I see a, ch a change already. And it's been, what, a few weeks or a month at the most? Maybe Close less. Month. Yeah. 510-848-5732, lest we forget why we're here. Uh, 1-800-439- 5732 or kpfa.org $75 premium for the book and like I said it's a good gift um, and I don't know does it say something weird if you give somebody the face <laughs> yeah. um, are you trying to you tell know, me something darling I, I mean what I did when I well as a matter of fact what I got how I got Jeffrey to start doing the exercises again is I just left the book on the table where we eat and I just left it there and finally it disappeared and went off and he went off into his office and um it was there for a while, and then his neck started improving. So it can work. You just have to be gentle. But, you know, most women I know are not self-conscious about this, and they may just be thrilled to get a book like this, especially one that works so well. Honestly, it does. 510-848-5732. Have I ever lied to you? 1-800-439-5732. Five seven three two. I don't know. Maybe I have. KPFA dot org. Not consciously. You know, one of the things that's interesting about this book and the topic, more broadly than than uh, alternatives to facelifts and such things, is um, the the issue in here of body, just body awareness, and how in our culture we, we've become disembodied in important ways and increasingly so with the advent of electronic devices that uh, I'm not here, I I'm somewhere else. Uh, and it's, I think it's really important, if not a yoga face facelift, to be engaged in many of the other things that, that we have discussed on this show that embody us. Yeah, it's true. 
800-439-5732 online all the time at kpfa.org. So, yikes, we've got about 30 seconds to go. If you haven't jumped out of your chair to get this book, please do it now, 510-848-5732, as we count down, 1-800-439-5732. The Yoga Face Lift is $75. It's a beautiful a uh, large format book with gorgeous uh, photographs uh, uh, in each stage of the exercises and f- thorough instructions. Um, we both know from experience that this works. We also know from experience that people have very bad experiences with cosmetic surgery because most people can't afford to go to someone who's good enough to do a great job, and it doesn't make you look younger. We're out of time. I want to thank all of you who have already pledged, and please encourage you to continue pledging well after we're off the air. Again, 510 510- 848-5732-1800-439-5732, Yoga Facelift, $75. I want to thank you all for listening and pledging. Visit your own healthandfitness.org for easier extended access to our over 600 archive shows with our library card feature. Get a free stream of this week's show, and you can find links to marieveronique.com uh, and uh, anything else that you've uh, seen and heard in our show list. Lots more at your own healthandfitness.org. Our email admin, admin, at your own healthandfitness.org. Your own Health and Fitness is produced by Lena Berman and Dr. Jeffrey Fawcett. And remember, being informed not only protects your health, it protects your freedom.